Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Let us worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. Come, let us worship the Lord our God. For the Lord God. is our God, and we are the Lord's people. As we wait upon the Lord, let us open our ears that, that we may both hear and heed the world of the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord, let us open our eyes that we may both see and perceive the will of the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord, let us open our hearts that we might understand our hearts and turn to the Lord for healing. be in an attitude of prayer. Please close your eyes, take several deep breaths, and center yourself on the Lord. We have listened to the words of the street corner and the marketplace, and we have heard the words of our friends and neighbors. These words have often left us confused. They have not pointed the way to a clear and compelling goal. So we come to you, O Lord, in search of the word that will give direction and meaning to our lives. Holy Spirit, within me, leave. Childlike innocence, retrieve. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all sinners. Let us confess before the Lord this day. Persistent word creator, patient teacher, persuasive spirit, you are tireless in speaking to us, but we find it easy to close our minds, to refuse to hear what would require painful change, to reject the truth because it is inconvenient. Forgive deliberate denseness of mind, fearful resistance to change, stubborn resistance that our way is the best way. Continue speaking until we hear. Try new parables on us until we think and understand. Argue with us until we do your will. What else will your love in Christ allow you to do? Amen. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. I could go on and on and on about your word. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness I am grateful for the things that you have done Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. Grateful, 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 gratefulness. It's flowing from my heart. Grateful, 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 grateful. Grateful, 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 gratefulness. It's flowing from my heart. Grateful, 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 Hey! 
flowing from my heart flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness the declaration of pardon friends hear the good news all who move by the Spirit of God are children of God we are heirs of God's splendor with Jesus Christ Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. Our gracious and loving Lord is the essence of generosity and patience. Rest in and rely on God's love and forgiveness. Amen. you folks but that music moved my spirit thank you Linda and Jacqueline praise the Lord the scripture reading this morning is Romans 8 verses 1 through 11 there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death for God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. 
For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.
will bring new life. Words on the wings of a morning, the dark night will fade away if you speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, a message of love to encourage me, lifting my heart from the snare. How you love me and care for me, Lord, speak to my heart. 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 Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your love abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, well, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your love abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. Never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your love abide. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. To my heart. my heart. The message version says it this way. His son, Jesus, he personally took on the human condition and entered the disorder mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. The law code weakens as always and was fractured by human nature could never have done the law always ended up being used as a band-aid people and children of God listen to that are we in that status today of trying to change a law for Band-Aid. And then it says the law has always ended up being used as a Band-Aid on sin instead of a deep healing. And now what the law code asks for but didn't deliver an accomplished as we, instead of redoubling ourselves in efforts, simply embrace what the Spirit has done. What the Spirit has done, is doing, and will do. What do I owe? What do I owe? In these scripture readings of Roman 8, 1 through 4, 1 through 4, and 1, uh, 4 through 11, of this sixth day, 
of Pentecost. The sixth day, sixth Sunday after Pentecost is that of where we need to be that still of reflecting of the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace to you each from God our Father and the Holy Spirit. This 20, start of this 29th week of 198 days with 168 days to go in this 2020 season. And most of us have an attitude of what someone else owes us. But what is it that we owe ourselves? And it, that is what if God has given us the ingredients, the ingredients to be that of oneness, for that of loving each other that we come into the fruitfulness with. However, we're still talking in the physical and not that of the spiritual. So the question we look at this morning is what we owe the world. We owe the world the reality that we are experiencing a supernatural encounter with the Lord. That we know what it means to be rescued, redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. We owe the world a living example of what it means to be spirit-filled and spirit life. We owe the world a positive message of salvation and sanctification. And then we need to look at what we owe the church, our fellow believers in Christ, that of service, that of giving, that of teaching, that of open-heartedness. We owe the church a life that is available and accessible to the Lord, that of 24-7, 365. But then being that bond servant, we need to show that we are an example of what the agape bound is all about. The agape, that of love and that of forgiveness. This morning, I would like for us to look at this area of debt that we have, that we owe and what we owe ourselves as followers of Christ. Jesus came to the earth to enable us to be able for us to have the best possible life there is the best possible life that we can enjoy, the best possible life of that of resurrection and the rapture. The apostle John gives us a glimpse of the future in Revelations 21, one through four. It says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. And the sea was no more. And I saw a Holy Spirit in the city of Jerusalem coming down out of earth from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and then they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall the mourning or the crying, the pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. I like that to resonate with you for a moment. In this moment and in this time, this period and this season. 
a season of which we need to reflect, but we need to be thankful, but a season of which we need to understand that God lives within us. We know that there is hurting of the physical, hurting of the spiritual, and hurting of the hearts and the minds. In this season. But as God reminds us through the Spirit, it's only a season. This too shall pass. This morning we need to look at how we live in the light of hope. But that of the good news. The good news that we enjoy much more. John 10.10 10 says that he came to bring us an abundant of life for here and now. The thief comes only to steal, kill, destroy, but I came to bring you that of more abundance. And then Luke 24.49 and in Acts chapter 1, Jesus goes further as he tells us how we are going to enjoy that abundant life. We're going to enjoy that abundant life being host of that of the Holy Spirit. Continually to be filled of that of the Holy Spirit. It is true that we still live in a fallen world. But in this fallen world, we are to enjoy a life that's truly amazing. The question we have to ask ourselves, even in this period of season, are we enjoying the goodness of that of God and the fullness of what God delivers us. We are enjoying our full access to God's love, joy, and peace daily. With all of that in mind, let us look at the few things this morning that we owe ourselves as Christian followers. That we owe ourselves the joy of enjoying God's unconditional love somebody ought to say amen it's unconditional love that which God gives us God did not have to redeem us Jesus did not have to come to earth to live among us and to die for us and be raised again the Holy Spirit did not have to come to even to be that of convicting us to cleanse us to live inside of us and guide us and to encourage us, to empower us and work with us in our transformation. But in all creation, God has chosen each one of us and he still chooses us to this day. And that's an amazing thing. Out of a aspect of unconditional love, God's loving and acceptance of us. One of the greatest stories of the Old Testament is that story of Abraham. Abraham living in a city full of sin that God said to leave. To leave because I love you unconditionally despite of your method of living despite of you being quite a piece of work as they say today all messed up trying to sell and give your wife away being an habitual liar but God doesn't give up on Abraham God continuously works with him shaping his life and leading him where he needs to be led to 
the Lord wanted Abraham to be blessed and to have the best life possible here on earth. God wants to do the same for each one of you. When God looks at us, there's nothing amazing about us. But yet God sees us for who that we are. He knows that we're not perfect. He knows that we have fallen. He knows that we're unredeemed, but yet he knows that we're enslaved. But yet he knows that we're sinners. But he still chooses to accept us despite of our sins. God has made us for us to be rescued and redeemed. God's love is forgiving for us. That we can do nothing to earn it, but his forgiveness is that of his grace. That he forgives each one of us. As John 3.16 reminds us, of the amazing forgiveness through that of Jesus Christ that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will have everlasting life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. This morning we need to look at the enjoying of God's forgiveness. This morning we need to look at the rejoicing of that forgiveness for all our sins. From that up to the least to the greatest. That it has been removed. That we are washed and cleansed once more. For all our wrongs and all our mistakes and all our sins. God loves transforms us. As Romans 8, the apostle makes it clear that God accepts us, forgives us. Then he wants us to do even more. He wants to restore us that we can have a life above sin. He wants to help us to live a life of hosting the Holy Spirit. A life of that that brings about anointing miracles, revelations, and transformations. God also loves us that we are the utmost desire that we live a life of bearing fruit of the Holy Spirit. So God loves the utmost desire for us to live a life and that we reflect in his glory and his honor. That we call that life a sacrifice life. It is a life of growing and maturing. It is a life of enjoying God's goodness and his grace. It is a life of becoming that of God and what God wants us to become. We owe it to ourselves through the grace of God to have that of an abundant life. An abundant life of blessings that we are being revealed as far back as De Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. And as you listen to these, I will paraphrase in their reading. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, that I have commanded you today. Two, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Three, blessed shall be you in the city and blessed shall be you in the fields. Four, blessed shall be the fruits of the womb and the fruits of your ground be that of fruit. Five, blessed shall be that of the basket and the kneeling of the bowl. But yet blessed shall be that of when you come in and the blessed shall be there when you go out. 
7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. 8. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your barns. 9. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself. 10. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. 11. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruits of your womb and the fruits of your grounds. 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasury. 13. And the Lord will make you head and not the tail. And it, 14, and if you turn aside from any of the words that I command to you, to the right or to the left, and to go after other gods to serve, we'll have to grow hold of you in reality, and God does not. But God shall save the life of that of which he commands, because he is not that of condemnation. God does not save us to bring us to harm. God wants us to live and live of blessings and honor. And an abundant life of progression. And in each generation should be that of enjoying more of God's blessing than the generations before. That is that of God's plan in seeing that of being the flesh. See the lives of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, and beyond, Ruth and Obey, Jesse and David, King Solomon. Even in these times and seasons, the baby boomer, the generation X, the millennium. That's why it is so important where we stand today to be that a voice but yet this generation that is upcoming to be that voice of change and not to be that of a band-aid with the law that will squelch it. It is God's plan for each succeeding generation to be greater than the past generations. That is his plan and being that in the beginning to out come of the greatest commission of which Jesus has given each one of us to be evangelized in the world and be better in the world and the world to come that we may be able to transform not only by the Holy Spirit but by the Spirit of the living God on the people of earth God wants to see a difference in us God wants to see a change but God's saying, I want you to have that of abundant life even in this season. But the generation now of which you are now standing upon, know that you can stand upon this generation and arise. I remember when my father used to always tell us, I want you to have a better life than I, what I had. That's why I want you to be educated. That's why I want you to be rooted in God. That's why I need you to see where I am, to see where I've been, but to see where you can go. Pray, yeah that we can make a difference. And as a result of our experiences today, we can make each generation to come better. But if we are to do that, we have to repent. We have to turn away from our wicked ways. We have to come back to that of the Lord. 
That is the only way for each generation to enjoy the fullness of God's grace, mercy, and love. Then it's that of an abundance of communion. I think it's amazing when you read Acts 2 for the people that received the Holy Spirit that day that came from all over the globe. There were people of every shade, creed, and color. There were people that were rich and there were people that were poor. There were people that spoke different languages. There were people that were educated and there was people that were uneducated. But they were all of one single people, a people of God. It was amazing to hear everyone of one accord through the Holy Spirit. It's like the Tower of Babel when reversed. People are, were not just coming together to be that against God, but to be there to receive God, to receive the Holy Spirit and the experience of the supernatural to be that of oneness, one heart, one mind, and one soul. There's more Christian in our world than we see. But see, we have to be those of ending things like racism, gender bashing, greed, human trafficking, and all the likes. We have to be that of godliness, of accepting all in all for all. Galatians 20, Galatians 3, 27 to 28, it says, For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew or Greek, there is neither slave or free, there is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6 says, Therefore I was a prisoner of the Lord and urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling to which you have been called with humanity and gentleness, with patience and bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain a unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, and just as you were called to one hope that belonging to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father, of all who is all and over all and through all. Somebody ought to say amen. Because if you look at even the walks and the protests today, when they said, pray everybody got on their knees to pray they didn't say what you or ask what you were because we recognize that we are all that child of God the oneness oneness that we can bear and rescue and redeem to that of the experience of Jesus Christ I do not ask for these not only, but only also for those who believe in me. They also believe in that of the word and that they may come all be one just as you. Father are in me and I in you. John 17, an abundance of life the blessings, the progression, that of communion, oneness, all in all, loving each other, loving all. We owe ourselves the fullness of the Spirit of God. 
being like Christ, being that of our brother's keeper. God has work to do with us, in us, and through us. Is just love for each of us, love for all of us, love for us in unity, just love of that of God. Recently, God looked at the life of Gideon and he says that there's the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And in Judges 6, 34, he reads the word, then the spirit of the Lord was clothed by Gideon's with power. Our youth, our young adults are a change for tomorrow. Our older is that of transition, but of experience. But all in all, it's that of what God has given us and empowered us with. The power to change, to change our ways, to be that of love, to be that of teaching, to be that of oneness. In other words, God's Holy Spirit did not just rest on Gideon. His Holy Spirit rested like a piece of cloth. You see, Mother Teresa told the story this way. She says, I want to be a pencil in God's hand. Where God does all of the thinking, the writing, the transcribing of who I am. But there's one problem with the pencil. The lead keeps breaking. Beloved, we are that lead in the pencil of which is in God's hand. It keeps breaking and God keeps having to sharpen it. But just like the cloth of Gideon, let that be a glove. Let God put on the glove and let God be that within me to mold me, to transform me, to strengthen me. Let God have that glove of power to change me that I can live a life of Christ who strengthens me. And the way that we do that is today of starting this way. Being that of exception. As God has given us the exception. First, we too have to forgive. Second, we too have to say we're sorry. We too have to start loving one another. We too have to start loving culture and understanding. We too have to start feeding the unfed, housing the unhoused, and loving those that are forgotten. But we too have to start doing this by being in the word, in his love, in his grace, in his teachings to transform and to teach others through acts and actions as God is. A life of being that of the glove of God. Being that that we know that the strength comes from that of who holds us, who holds us, who molds us to transform us. His acceptance, his forgiving, his transforming, his power, all brings us back to that of growth growth and communion, growth and oneness, 
growth in that of the Spirit of God. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you today. As you've heard Linda sing it earlier, speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart to speak to my spirit. No matter where you are today, I want you to find your altar. And in finding your altar, go to your altar on your knees before God. And in going to the altar to go to your knees to God, give it to God. But you have to go to the altar to relinquish it. Take a moment as we pause and just meditate and put ourselves in that of the centering of God. God right here right now in this season be that of thankfulness be that of mercy be that of joy be that of love but in order to do that you got to believe you got to trust and you got to be open to receive that of his love. Do you believe that of Jesus Christ? Do you trust in the word and his acts and actions to save you? Are you now going to trust him? to take you where you need to go now. From a splintered being to that of a wholeness in spirit, the oneness, unified in love, unified in word, unified in each other. Whatever I may have done, I ask for your forgiveness. Whatever you may have done that I may have held against you, I forgive you. All in all, I'm sorry. I am sorry. But I humble myself to you that we can humble ourselves to that of God being unified to transform to start making a difference let us pray gracious and almighty God as we come to you this morning we have come to you frazzled torn and tattered but yet God as we are ingesting and receiving your word through reflection through repetitiveness in order for us to come to that of resolve God we ask for the repentance that only you can give and in God, we surrender ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves to you this moment in this time. Now God infuse us as you have formed us. 
Now, God, fill us that we can be that of where you want us to be. But God, we ask that you put your hands on our hearts, our bodies, our minds, our spirits. Mend us, oh God. Mend us as we reach to mend each other by standing shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand, heart to heart, mind to mind. God, we ask for the serenity of peace that we know the solitude of a moment to just pause and be still to hear you speak to us. God, we understand this season shall pass. We ask that you continue to keep the light on, that we too can continue to strive in this journey for that of victory, the victory of which you've already given through your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We thank you in that of his blood for forgiveness of that of communion one mind one heart one blood in jesus name we pray amen amen speak to my heart holy spirit give me the words that will bring new life Words on the wings of a morning The dark night will fade away If you speak to my heart Speak to my heart Holy Spirit A message of love To encourage me Lifting my heart from the snare How you love me and care for me Speak to my heart 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 Speak to my heart, Lord Give me a holy word If I can't hear from you Then I'll know what to do Oh, I won't go alone I'll never go on my own Just let your spirit guide And let your love abide Speak to my heart, Lord Give me a holy word If I can't hear from you and then I know what to do. Well, I won't go alone. I never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your love abide. Speak to my heart. Oh, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart speak to my heart as Paul has reminded us in the word today there was a crucifixion but yet as we're in the Pentecost season we know that there was a resurrection Amen. and you are part of that resurrection so speak to the heart, speak to the spirit. Speak to that of your neighbor, of the oneness of God. As you go through this week, go through this week as a challenge to speak, to feed, to forgive, to say I'm sorry. But knowing all in all, speak of that of victory. 
Go in peace, go in victory. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh. Lord. 